have you ever wanted flawless skin, but then you have this, 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 or this. Well, I'm going to show you guys how to fake it until you make it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is apply lotion. Because if you apply lotion, then your face can look like this. Now, we're going to go ahead and apply our lotion. When you apply your lotion, you're going to want to put it on the back of your hand. Now, I want to say that I'm not a professional makeup artist, but this is from years of makeup fails. I usually use just about that amount. Then you're going to want to use a brush with a flat head. Slightly dip. Choose where you want to start on your face, which for me is always usually over here because of my acne is very dry. And then circular motions. Which, yes, we will be using this whole thing of lotion. However, we just want to apply it on a little at a time. Now, this step is not for everybody. Everybody has different skin textures and everybody has different skin types. Um, some people may have combination, some may have dry, some might have oily. For me, I have very dry skin, hence why um, this is always tends to be very dried out, especially along my jawline. So for me, this is like my primer. So I also tend to get very dry between the eyes. Okay, something you're going to want to keep close by after this is a clean makeup wipe. Of course, after one use, the makeup wipe is no longer clean. But you're going to want to keep cleaning off the back of your hand. Because we're going to be using it a lot in this tutorial. The next step that you are going to want to follow is you want to get your regular foundation. For me, I use the Believe Beauty in shade Nude. Which I use medium to full coverage. Now, if your foundation does not have a pump, um, I would just go with right around the same amount that you'd probably get out of a tube, I would assume, or to pour. I'm going to do three pumps, which gives me about that much. Now, 
Now taking a flat brush that you would typically use for probably glitter eyeshadows, I'm going to go ahead and do a line up, a line side here, side here, fill in the crease of my nose. down my nose. I'm just going to paint it on to my acne. Apply under the eye like you would a concealer. You could do it triangularly, or you can do it up, or you could do it both ways. Because it will not matter. It will not affect the shape of your face due to the fact that this is just your starting layer. Of course, we will not be using another layer of foundation. We This is just our starting layer for creams. Now if you have foundation left over on the back of your hand, just scoop it up as much as you can and find random spots to put it. Now you want to go back in with that same makeup wipe and before the foundation on the back of your hand is dry, wipe it off. Now you're going to want to take that same flat head brush that you use for your lotion. Um, if you prefer a beauty blender, you can go ahead and use a beauty blender. You'll get similar to the same results. And start wherever you would like on your face. And instead of the circular motions we did earlier, we will be doing just padding motions. Because if you do padding motions similar to a beauty blender, you will get the most um, full coverage results. Now if you do not want full coverage results, then I would suggest a circular motion. Now if you want to blend down to your neck, that's when it's okay to use circular motions down to the neck. At this point is when you might start to feel that your foundation looks a little bit cakey or just not like another layer of skin. Which of course this is natural, especially under the eyes. But of course, for me, I have like this big dry spot right here. Because of my face soaked up all the lotion in that in particular area. So of course, because I said that we already probably look like we're cakey. Um, actually, I will go ahead and take a picture of my cell phone and insert that to show you guys what the face should look like up close at this point. Which, I will again remind you, is going to look very cakey.
Now, our next step is going to be to apply our concealer. Now, with concealer, it, I have found that it is a common misconception to apply it in a triangle under the eye. All that is going to do is just give you a triangle that's bright. But if you take your concealer and you work it under your eye and go in an upwards direction out from your eye, it will give you a lifting effect. And then also, if you want to cover some, your acne a little more, that is perfectly okay. And you also want to just go ahead and do your highlight points. Because of, when you use a concealer, for my personal... Um, From my personal experience, it is best to use it also for a pre-highlight. Um, the only place I do not put it is in these areas because of those already are points to your face where you can see the light hits it. So it's less of something you need to be concerned about. Okay, once you hit all of the highlight points of your face, besides your cheekbones, you just want to go ahead and blend it out. Using them same padding motions that I had mentioned earlier. See how it gives you that upturned look? Okay, now when you do your nose, the brush will do most of the work as long as you do the patting motion because the brush will tend to soak up the product. Now our next step is we are going to take a foundation a couple shades darker than your actual skin color. As you can tell, this is a bit dark for me. So I would suggest maybe not following my footsteps and using something this dark compared to your skin tone. However, sometimes the brush does like to um, soak up some of the foundation, so therefore it's not going to show up as dark to your skin. But if you do choose to use as dark of a foundation as I am for your skin color, just try to put as little bit as possible as close to your cheek as possible. Because the more your cheeks stand out, the more contoured your face looks, is what I've learned from my personal experience. Now, when you're contouring your nose, most people will say just draw it on. Something I've noticed is just find your bone and just kind of pack it in there as much as you can. Now, if you don't already have eyeshadow on, which I've learned to do eyeshadow before foundation because of the fact that with your concealer it tends to just stick there or smear. Then you can drag it up into your crease and make it look like a continuous um, bone structure.
Now because I have a 10 head, I'm going to go ahead and do one line here, one line here. And that's all we're going to need this brush for. Now, when we go to blend out the cheek um, contour, you want to blend it upwards. Okay, and then for the nose, you want to pat towards the nose bone. And then you just do a circular motion on the lid. Because this one does not matter nearly as much. See how we get that cute little nose now? Okay, after that you are done with this in particular brush. Okay, the next step in my makeup routine, for me personally, is I like to go in with a setting powder. Now, something that I've actually learned recently is that when you are doing your powder, if you go all over the face, it will not look as good as it would doing just partial sections. So let me just take a picture of my skin right now. This is not my usual powder brush, by the way. She's my the makeup brush is already. Okay, so now we're gonna go the sides of the nose. However, this might become my new nose contour brush because of it's a lot easier to see where I'm putting it. Then the cheekbones where, you know, most of the big YouTubers put it anyway. Or not, sorry, I'm at the jawbone. Or jawline. Okay, now something that I find kind of interesting is that if you bake the center of your forehead between your eyebrows, it'll look a lot better.
Now we're going to leave our powder brush out. And let me take a picture of what my, in particular, look of my skin looks like. My next step is going to be to take my other brush, which I don't usually use this for blush either. I'm just using what I have because I'm running low on brushes. And we're going to go ahead and lightly take this to our cheek. Um, a trick I've learned also recently is to take more of a warm tone to your skin for your blush and it actually looks very, very pretty. Because uh, if you take a warmer tone to your skin rather than like a pink, if you're very pale, it's a lot more flattering. Now going into my highlight. You want to use something that actually looks like a blending brush for what you would use on your eye. At least that's what I've personally been using. And then you want to take slow circular motions and go towards your smile line. Which this is actually something I did learn from Nikki Tutorials. Or you can even work it up. That's fine too. Now when it comes to the nose, because we contoured it, you just want to gently kind of pat the highlight powder wherever you want to put it. You don't want to connect it with your, um, like the boop of your nose, if that makes any sense. The tip of your nose. And your nose will look like this. Now if you do your chin, this gives it a nice brightness. Okay, now we can take our powder brush, and when you do the under eye bake, you want to swipe upwards. And see how the main focus of your nose is up here? That's what gives the illusion of it being smaller. And now you are done with your powder brush and your base is done. Of course, if you have textured skin, you will still be able to see the texture, but your skin will look a lot healthier. 
and it will not be as noticeable, especially from afar. Which I will now insert a picture of what the after results looks like.